Hey! <clears throat> howdy, 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 howdy. This is the Views Express right here in the Liberty and Freedom Network. Broadcasting live on the 31st of August, 2012. Broadcasting live behind enemy lines in FEMA Region 9. From the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. Welcome to the Views Express. Like I said, on the Facebook page, the first hour is Open Forum Friday. So if you're in the chat room there on Spreaker, go ahead and punch in your questions there. Let me know you're there. I get a lot of notifications of followers. And I notice that I get 8, 10, 12, 15 followers, but hardly anybody in the chat room. So uh, say hey. If you're gonna if you're gonna stick around a while, let me know. If you're gonna leave, let me know. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. If you want to call in and give me your view of what's happening in your neck of the woods, if you want to, you know, call in and and talk about geopolitical stuff and what you think of this of this Romney Ryan ticket, please do. If you want to call in, and uh, let's be nice, by the way, when you call in, <laughs> okay, I know it's a no-holds-barred show, but uh, it's also on very early in the evening on the East Coast, and and it's uh, 4.04 p.m. here on the West Coast, so let's be nice. Hey, if you have a favorite apple pie recipe you want to share, go ahead and call in on that, too. (laughs) It's open forum. Uh, First thing I want to get to is, if you are listening to the views expressed on the website, on the Liberty and Freedom Network website, on the right-hand side, you see many directions of man. It's a book. I wrote it. Please buy it. (laughs) It's my perspective of things going on and some, uh, you know, relatively simple answers uh, that I think would work, you know, but that's, you know, my perspective on things. Uh, It goes deep into some areas and it touches upon certain other areas. It's my perspective on what the world is like. There's no table of contents, so you can just open it up and start reading. And uh, I will rewrite it. It is, there are some things that I want to add to it. So there is another edition coming out. I don't know when. <laughs> I'm, I, I have to set myself a, a, a date to get that out, uh, get a deadline going. Uh, also, if you're on the website, go to the left hand side, you'll see store. Please promote your patriotism by going to the store and buying stuff if you can. If you don't want to buy the book or buy stuff, you can just go ahead and donate if you like. Yeah, there's a donate button there on the left-hand side. Donate as much as you like. All it does is keeps the website up and the show going. That's all it does. I want to update and upgrade the site, so your help with that is very much appreciated. So, onward and upward to bigger and... uh, hopefully better things. If you want to follow along, please do. Um, You can go to Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook. Would love for you to like the page. It'd be great. Today we're going to talk about mega banks. Mega banks plan for collapse with contingency plans and uh, private police force. True activist dot com has that story um pictures all over the place on liberty and freedom network there on facebook sustainable cities siemens usa www.usa.siemens.com that's s-i-e-m-e-s dot com agenda 21 company there talking about sustainable cities anytime you see the word sustainable community or sustainable cities It's Agenda 21, period, end of sentence. Uh, I have uh, from Sleep No More Photos, 
I uh, have a picture up there of uh, hidden in plain sight FEMA stations. <laughs> yeah, FEMA camps all over the place. Uh, go check that out. Of course, why in the world are they spraying.com? There's a picture up there as well. And, of course, those folks in Minneapolis, Minnesota, are, uh, yeah, if you're still having drills in your city, let me know. You can email me at libertyandfreedomnetwork at usa.com. Liberty and Freedom Network at USA.com. And there's a uh, uh, news alert Minneapolis military drills based around quote unquote confrontation scenarios. Well, of course, they know there's going to be confrontations because we don't want the tyranny. And of course, another picture from Business Insider, of all people. BusinessInsider.com, everyone is asking about the Russian sub spotted in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, why is there a Russian sub in the Gulf of Mexico? From the Intel Hub, activists forced to show papers to DHS or be detained for 72 hours. And of course, welcome to freedom. There's a picture up there with a bunch of cameras. Oh, and by the way, if you have kids in school... Genius female chimpanzee found to be smarter than U.S. high school students. Huh, maybe it's something in the water? That's from naturalnews.com. And, of course, Syrian group with close ties to FSA. Terrorists openly arms rebels with help from the U.S. Isn't that lovely? The Intel, uh, that's at uh, the Intel Hub. Another one from the Intel Hub is bullets, false flags, and biological warfare. What is the U.S. government planning? Yeah, with 1.5, 1.4 billion rounds of ammunition? Yeah, you tell me, folks. You tell me. A lot of things going on, a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to do. And this is Friday. I hope you're having a great Friday. We're 10 minutes into the show. <clears throat> and... We're going to take a one of my long breaks here so that you can go do whatever it is you got to do and then sit down and we'll get into the news and I'll analyze it and break it down for you, all right? Hey, you guys are great. Happy Friday. Thank you for coming to The Views Expressed right here on the Liberty and Freedom Network. Calvin Wheeler is an American dreamer in a triple threat cage match with his two biggest adversaries, everyday life and himself. His marriage to the woman he believed to be his soulmate is rapidly evaporating before his eyes. The book he's been working on for over a decade is slipping through his fingers as he struggles to complete it. As these pressures grow, Calvin compensates by conjuring up outrageous road rage scenarios in the multiplex of his mind. To make matters even worse, he drives for a living, as his life, job, and dreams simultaneously implode. His wild fantasies begin to literally bleed over into reality. Now, with a gun in one hand and a steering wheel in the other, this distant runner-up in the human race feels empowered for the very first time. And the moral to the story? Traffic can be murder. Red Asphalt by Scott Cherney. Available on the Kindle and in paperback at Amazon.com. It's New York, February 6, 1964. 
The Beatles are making their appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show in one more day. The Plaza Hotel is crazy with the preparations. Alex Frazier, a desk clerk, has secretly let his brother Freddie use the penthouse suite for the evening so he can wine and dine the girl of his dreams. What Alex and Freddie don't know is the Secret Service are using the same room to hide spy novelist Henry Lade. His most recent novel has attracted the attention of the Soviets and East Germans. The communist countries believe Lade may have secretly discovered their plot to bomb Fresno. Assassins are dispatched to kidnap or kill Lade, whichever is easiest. What Agent John Parker and Henry Lade don't know is the Beatles are staying in the same room for their first appearance on American television. Let's Get Lade by Thomas Amo, available on the Kindle at Amazon.com. The Views Expressed with your host, Reverend Wayne, on Spreaker.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Views Express for the 31st of August, 2012. I'm your host, Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, broadcasting live on the Liberty and Freedom Network, broadcasting also on Spreaker.com, broadcasting live from the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. Yeah, go to Google Earth and look up Reno, Nevada. <laughs> yeah. Behind enemy lines in FEMA Region 9. That's uh, California, Arizona, and Nevada. Um, I thought I'd throw that in there. How y'all doing today? If you're in the chat room, say hi. But if you're on the website, I'm not in the chat room there. So drop on over to Spreaker <laughs> and uh, talk to me in the chat room there. Reason why, and maybe you techies can help me out on this one. Uh... If you're familiar with the Spreaker DJ console, I know most of the hosts on Spreaker are. If you look down on the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see CPU shows a percentage and then memory. <laughs> uh, if I open up any more tabs, that memory that you know goes up, and and I've had my browser shut down, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. That's why I'm not over at the website, over at uh, associated with this show. That would be freeamericaradio.wix, that's W-I-X, dot com slash the views expressed. I'm not in that chat room. I'm over on the chat room in Spreaker. And uh, <clears throat> more than happy, more than happy to have you here. Thank you for coming to the views expressed for the 31st of August, 2012. Let's check out the following, shall we? Go to Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook. That's where most of my stories are that I find. I got people poking me on Facebook. I got men, women, animals, llamas. All, anyway, I'm just kidding. Anywho, over at Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook, I want to say this. 
Avoid vaccines. Learn natural ways to boost your immune system instead. This is from Buell Buzz, B-E-W-O, excuse me. I am so dense sometimes. It's Be Well Buzz, sorry. B-E-W-E-L-L Buzz, B-U-Z-Z. Over on Facebook, Be Well Buzz. It's a picture on, uh, on there, Liberty and Freedom Network, that shows a baby. And the words say, they want, me to, they want to inject me with what? The most common ingredient in any vaccine is formaldehyde. On June 10th, 2011, the U.S. National Toxicology, uh, Toxicology Program described formaldehyde as, quote, known to be a human carcinogen, unquote, cancer-causing. Educate. Don't vaccinate. And don't let your school say you can't, your kid can't go to school without the vaccination. And if they say it's the law, you tell them, no, it isn't. Okay. That's all you got to tell them. There's nothing they can say to you. And by law, they cannot refuse. They cannot refuse you if you want your child to go to that particular school in your district, okay? Take it up with the superintendent. <clears throat> Let me break this down from Siemens USA, S-I-E-M-E-N-S, -E -E or usa.siemens.com. Okay, the link on Liberty and Freedom Network I posted the headline, Agenda 21 Company, and it is. Tell you why. Green buildings. If you click on that, it'll take you like halfway down into the particular site. It says, huge potential for improvement. Buildings account for 40% of the worldwide uh, energy consumption and about 21% of all greenhouse gas emissions, which is not true uh, from some reports I've seen. At the same time, they represent enormous potential for improvement with intelligent building technology and comprehensive energy solutions. Up to 60% of their consumed energy can be saved. Okay. Integrated building solutions. A green building requires efficient in infrastructure, accurate information management, and continual real-time maintenance. When all three work together, you can reduce your facility's greenhouse gas emissions, improve indoor air quality, and maximize efficiencies. Total Building Solutions, TBS, is what we call this at Siemens. This means the integration of all systems that are part of the building services infrastructure, such as heating, ventilation, climate control, access control systems, video surveillance, burglar, fire alarms, and evacuation systems. The integration of all these systems provides greater convenience, improves security and energy efficiency. Buildings become simpler to run and function more reliably at lower cost. Optimal, there's a graph there that shows uh, what they mean. Uh, optimal energy use, assessing a building's cost effectiveness means taking into account of all the costs that will be incurred during its life cycle, not just development costs. Saving potential, savings potential can be fully exploited through transparency in use and operation, ongoing upgrades and the improvement of individual components, or through comprehensive energy modernization and accompanying energy services. This, types, this type of maximized Energy efficiency takes pressure off public sector budgets while protecting the environment at the same time. Now, I read that and I put that up there because some people might think, well, you know, that's no big deal. We, wanna, we want our buildings to be efficient. We want to, you know, save money. We want to lessen our carbon footprint and all this that, and other thing. Uh, European scientists and American scientists have gotten together and found out something. Al Gore lied to you. Have you seen Inconvenient Truth? I have. That is the, I don't know how he got an Oscar for that. 
That is the worst piece of garbage with all sorts of lies all through it. Okay? Uh, it's, it, it, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at it for just a documentary and that's all you're looking at it, you know, as, okay. But if you really dig into the science of what he talks about and what so-called scientists in that movie talk about, it's all full of crap. It's, it's European scientists and American scientists have come out and said global, global warming is a fraud. David Icke talked about it. Alex Jones talked about it with his research. Uh, Jesse Ventura talked about it. Global warming is a fraud. You know, well, the polar bears in the Arctic are dying. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. Okay. Now, let me interject there. Well, I'll finish my point, and my point is this. You people are being lied to, okay? That's my point. You people are being lied to by the mainstream media, the corporate, uh, the corporations, the educational establishments. You're being lied to, okay? Period. Now, with that said, let me tell you this. It is common that one person, you might be talking to a friend of yours, and you might be talking about... Uh, you know, whatever it is you're talking about, but they'll turn around and say you're wrong because of this, this, and this. Well, when you know that you're right and you have looked at those things they're telling you about and you look at your friend and say, you're wrong, here's why. There's the argument. A big question, philosophically, if you will, could be, how can two people in the same room be right? But then again, how can two people in the same room be wrong? Huh. Kind of kind of a mental quandary there, is it not? <laughs> Does that not make your head spin? I mean, seriously. You know, when you talk to someone, when people contradict me and say that I'm wrong, I say prove yourself right. They can't. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yes, you do. You got to prove it to yourself. Hello. How can you make sure? How can you be sure that what you do is right if you do not take the time to research it, work on it, you know, and all of that? I used to work on cars. How do I know how to work on cars? Because I went to class. Because I learned on a daily basis. What's an alternator? What's this? What's that? I learned. I know. So how can someone come to me and say, well, you know, the problem with the car is not, the, uh, is not that. Uh, I looked at it, and that's the problem. No, it's not. It's, it's got to be something else. Uh, no, it's not. You know, so when someone wants to constantly contradict me and tell me I'm wrong, they're going to have to prove themselves right. And if they're going to sit there and say, no, they don't have to, bye, have a nice day. I'm not going to waste my time with people like that, and neither should you. If you think I'm wrong, prove yourself right. That's all I got to say in a general sense. Now, I'm not talking to a particular person, but I, you know, I'm just saying that if you are with your friend and they say and they contradict you, but they don't want to prove anything to you, then why waste your time? You know what I'm saying? Why waste your time? It's just, to me, it's better to have everything, all the information right here available to me than sit there and contradict somebody without having anything to stand on. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at all this stuff, like, you know, uh, sustainable cities and sustainable development and global warming and all this and all that, go do the research yourself. You know, 
I say, I, I, I tell you straight up, 9-11 was an inside job. How could, and people would say, how could Bush ever get that many people together? Hello, it went clear back to Clinton. Okay. Went clear back to him. And by the way, before you get all hot and bothered and wild and crazy and start yelling, Osama bin Laden's been dead since 2001, early 2002. Doctors at Dubai Hospital have already said he was in failing health at that time. It's on record. No, they didn't go into that house and, uh, and kill him. No, the SEALs didn't do it. And why in the world, if that was the case, did the SEALs die in a helicopter, quote-unquote, accident after they went in and shot, apparently a shot, allegedly shot Osama bin Laden? When all the records have said clear back to 2001, 2002, he was dead already. Hello? Doesn't make sense to me. And why would they shove his body off in the water when it's not there? It, 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 no, you don't do that. It's not the way they bury people. Hello. They wanted to hide the evidence. That's what they wanted to hide. Oh, yeah. Yesterday, for a little bit, I talked about the fact that I'm a remote viewer. I do that. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that wasn't Osama bin Laden. Just telling you. <laughs> Just telling you straight up. Okay. 9-11's an inside job. Oklahoma, inside job. On record, people have come out and said, even witnesses inside the building before it went kablooey, you know, secretaries, other people were saying the phone company came in there with these big boxes and they look like, you know, yeah, it's all an inside job, folks. Why? Two reasons. Number one, to collapse the United States of America to get rid of its sovereignty and freedom and liberty for all of us. Period. That's one of them. That's one reason why they do it. That would entail also taking away your constitutional protected rights. But your rights don't come from a piece of paper. They come from a creator. Insert deity there. And the second reason why they did this is because, you know, why they did Oklahoma, why they did 9-11, all that, is because of the fact they want justification for trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars to go to the war effort so that we, the, 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 the people running America, not you and I, folks, uh, so that they can justify the action of going into some other country and occupying it. Okay? That's, that's the two reasons why they do this. And if you don't believe me, go back and check in history. Roman Republic did the same thing. The Egyptians did the same thing. The, um, you know, all of that. You just go back in history. It's, it's right there. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's right there. You know? Um, uh, over at the uh, Spreaker chat, I just want to say hello to Joe... Joe's radio show. Just want to say hello to him. Uh, I am, and Joe asked me if I'm Republican or Democrat. I'm non-partisan. Neither one, because both Republicans and Democrats are uh, bought off by the same people. Uh, two puppets, one puppet master. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> briefly, the Bilderberg Group, the Rothschilds, Rock Rockefellers, they all control the presidency. Former cabinet members... Um, as far back as Nixon and Ford, uh, specifically in the Ford uh, era, came out later on, like 20 years after that, and said, well, you know, the president is run by somebody else, and um, when the person goes into the Oval Office, several people in suits walk in and say, yeah, yeah, we know what you said on the campaign trail, you got elected, you're here in the office, but guess what, it's, it's not going to be like you want it to be, here's how it's really going to be. So there's controllers everywhere. Former cabinet members, inside people, okay, have said that's the way it is. And it's been that way for quite a long time. Um, there's so many things in this country that we overlook, either because we don't want to pay attention or just because we want to overlook them, that... 
usually when something out of the ordinary happens, we're like, what just happened and why did it happen? And then by the time we ask those questions, it's swept under the rug and, and then all of a sudden we see Black Hawk helicopters in downtown Minneapolis. You know, we see, you know, videos on YouTube of, of long trains going down the track with military hardware on them. Then we find out the Pentagon tells all the county uh, uh, sheriffs and all the law enforcement in every state, hey, uh, we got, our, we got uh, military surplus. Uh, all you have to do is pay for shipping and handling, and it's yours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There is so much going on that we have to pay attention to. Seriously. Seriously. My question is, is why don't people pay attention? Well, uh, the operative word there is want. They don't want to step outside of their comfort zone. They don't want to get outside of their cookie cutter way of seeing things. They don't want to put down their beer and stop watching their stupid reality shows and dumb sports programs long enough to see what's going on. In fact, have you recently been to the mall in your city or been out and about in your city? And you go to restaurants or you go to the mall or you go someplace and you see all these people out buying stuff, right? They're all out just, you know, hey, they're out at the mall. They're going to Starbucks. They're doing this. They're doing it. Why? Because they don't really give a crap. They want the news off. They don't want to listen to it. They don't, they don't want any of it. They want, as a friend of mine said, I want to see positive things. I don't want to listen to all that negative stuff. Really? Uh, my mom told me once, religion and politics should stay private. I looked at her and went, well, how are we going to progress as a society if we don't talk about this stuff and try to work things out? She went, <clears throat> and walked out of the room. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it's just one of those things, you know. Um, the other thing that, that I wanted to talk about today was the fact that, again, our government I, I don't even want to call it our government. It's not ours anymore. It was handed over to the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers back in 1913 when President Woodrow Wilson signed the Internal Revenue Act and the Federal Reserve Act because the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and others of that time, the Car Carnegies, the Fords, all that, they wanted a private bank for their own money. Well, when we started really you know, doing that, by the way, uh, the back then, the the elites and all of those people loaned money for the war effort, World War One, and people over in Europe who were connected with the Rothschilds and Rockefellers funded the opposition. So your tax dollars back then, and it wasn't tax dollars, it was, you know, just, it was something back then point is our government of Washington DC funded both sides of the war go look it up it's in history it's right there just dig don't look at the current history books look at like 19 you know hundreds and 1980 you know look back there in the history books or look at the documents from back then the Russians or I should say I shouldn't say the Russians the Russians knew what the British military or the British intelligence and military and the American military were doing back in World War II. Because in 1929, 1928-29, OSS, which is now CIA, and British uh, intelligence saw this one little gentleman, World War I veteran that just had a bunch of people following him for some reason. They listened. They infiltrated the group that he was a part of. And they found out that he was gaining a lot of followers. So in 1933, they set him up with his own government. That man's Adolf Hitler. Yes, British intelligence and our uh, people uh, set him up. They do that, folks. Don't put it past them. It's in history. Go look it up. Go dig. Go, the information's there. We did that with Saddam Hussein. 
uh, in the mid, in the late to early 70s. We did that with uh, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, the late Muammar Gaddafi. By the way, Muammar Gaddafi is a, uh, or was, <coughs> a uh, graduate of uh, political science out of a uh, university in Phoenix, Arizona. Did you know that? Yeah. So, and he goes back and <clears throat> we use him, our, our, our intelligence and our military use him. And then he looks at us and goes, I don't know. I, I've got some weapons here. That I, and then we step in and go, no, you're not using them. And he's going, yeah, I guess you're right. I'm not using them. And so he backed down like five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was, he gave up. He, you know, in Libya, he just said, I'm getting rid of my weapons of mass destruction because he knew we could kick his butt. And we did. And same thing with Saddam Hussein. But Saddam Hussein was an arrogant SOB and thought he could pull the wool over our eyes, and he didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and look what happened. And, and if you saw that video on YouTube of, of his execution, Saddam Hussein's execution, you notice that everybody wore black hoods? Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting little tidbit of information there, isn't it? Anyway, lots that I want to get into. I've just been ranting for the first 40 minutes, but I want to go back to Liberty and Freedom Network. I was going to take a break. I'm, it's my own network. I can take a break whenever I feel like it. I'm not beholden to any particular network. Um, I put up on Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook. Please go there and like my page. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Ventura, Police State, FEMA Camps, full episode. I want to tell you something. That was the only time on True TV that that particular episode was aired. After that, <clears throat> the government, or I should say the, the people in Washington, D.C., uh, send someone to True TV and said, uh, no, you're not going to re-air that. And so they went ahead and uh, the people that work for them, technically speaking, the, the, the tech gurus, went into all, yes, got into the cable, got into the satellite systems, got into your DVR and your TiVos, and erased that episode if you had it. They can do that, folks. Don't believe me? Go look it up. By the way, you might want to read the Telecommunications Act of 1996. It said in there, and I'm not quoting from it, I'm just saying the gist of it is, they have back doors to everything. They've amended that thing I don't know how many times, and they have back doors into your cell phones, into your iPhones, into your iPads. They can track you at will if they wish but i have jesse ventura police state fema camps full episode up on liberty and freedom network i got pictures all over the place up there of course minneapolis military drills based around confrontation scenarios let me ask you a question did you know there was a russian sub in the gulf of mexico <laughs> business insider talks about that and go to break folks I figured, why not? Let's get the break out of the way. Oh, someone calling me. Go to break now. It's New York, February 6, 1964. The Beatles are making their appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show in one more day. The Plaza Hotel is crazy with the preparations. Alex Frazier, a desk clerk, has secretly let his brother Freddy use the penthouse suite for the evening so he can wine and dine the girl of his dreams. What Alex and Freddy don't know is the Secret Service are using the same room to hide spy novelist Henry Laid. His most recent novel has attracted the attention of the Soviets and East Germans. The communist countries believe Laid may have secretly discovered their plot to bomb Fresno. Assassins are dispatched to kidnap or kill Laid, whichever is easiest. What Agent John Parker and Henry Lay don't know is the Beatles are staying in the same room for their first appearance on American television. Let's Get Laid by Thomas Amo, available on the Kindle at Amazon.com. 
From family to friends in everyday life, he sees it for what it is. He'll tell you his views on family, politics, and what's in the news. From the world around him, he discusses many issues. Come listen to The Brian Keller Show right here on Spreaker.com. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and facts that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal, the government lies and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions of of times more. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about late night in the Midlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Whatever the subject you can think of, we talk about it. Come join Diana and Wayne as we discuss whatever it is that is happening in our lives. Come and listen to Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show. Check it out on Spreaker.com. Had somebody call in just before the break there. Hello, Nicole. Hello. <laughs> Happy Blue Moon to everybody. <laughs> Blue Moon, yes, it is. And, um, yes, it is. Holy crap. Um, yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, Liberty and Freedom Network, Facebook. Yeah, fa- is it me? I just want to, I you know, a little side note here. <laughs> is <laughs> is it me or sometimes I go to post something on Facebook and it doesn't show up for like five minutes? Is does that is, is it? Me oh no, I can't even get on mobile. If if I try to post something on mobile other yeah. than a picture or a repost, yeah, so it completely shuts down. Jesus, I'm in mobile hell because I don't want to get on my damn computer. Why? Because it's time to pay bills. And you know what, people? I don't want to be reminded every time I get on the computer I have to pay bills. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, don't send me any uh, game requests, okay? I'm done with that, all right? Hey, I haven't sent any game requests to anybody because I haven't been playing. Thank you very freaking little. Yeah, okay? yeah. Sounds like you're spraying something. What are you doing? Spraying? No. My neighbor, I had to go inside. My neighbor heard my um, blue moon, and she screamed across the way, and I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Like, you or yeah. specifically everybody out in the world. Yeah. So. Just you silly freaks here on the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my cat. My cat is such a freak. I've got to find a way to. Uh, 
post this. She, she always does it when I don't have my camera on. Damn. She'll get up on our face and she'll like clap for herself. God. I hear talking I in the background. <laughs> no, 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 not talking in the background. That was weird. I heard something going on in the background. It's anyway. making three cats. They ought not be doing anything. <laughs> and cat, cats don't it's talk, cat. at least not that I know of. <laughs> they talk. Oh, yeah, they talk to me. Trust me, they keep me company. Yeah. Hey, getting on to businessinsider.com, the military and defense section, or politics section. section. Oh, Again, it says, really? yeah, it says everyone is asking about the Russian subs spotted in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, Leandro uh, uh, Oliva, contributor over there, said this. An unusual story has been circulating since last week of a, a Kula class Russian submarine lurking in the Gulf of Mexico for weeks, evidently undetected by the U.S. The story is odd, not only because such a mission would be unusual and alarming, but also because of the source. In this case, veteran national security reporter, former Washington Times columnist Bill Kurtz, via... The conservative news website, The Washington Free Bacon, launched in 2012. Free Bacon, well, awesome. No, and, <laughs> yeah. While cat and mouse games between Soviet and American subforces were fairly commonplace during Cold War, these types of missions are very rare now, with at least uh, with the last acknowledged set of occurrences reported by the New York Times in 2009. As part of the yeah, as part of the Russia's military entrenchment and treaty disarmament since the collapse of the Soviet Union, its total deployed navy was reduced, along with geographical projection of its missions. While Russian navy uh, under Putin uh, and Medvedev, Med 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 that guy, Med Med <laughs> Med Medvedev, that guy, that guy, that dude, that dude. Uh, he, P uh, Putin's puppet. There you go. Has under said yeah. He has undertaken advised symbolic missions since 2008. Yada yada yada. It goes on down. <clears throat> uh, such as 2008 visit by the contingent of its weathered North Sea fleet to Venezuela. These have generally not been much more than extremely visible ways to demonstrate displeasure with the U.S. and NATO policy and or maintain good relations. So why is it there? So let's cruise down here. So then would Russia That's be willing... That's a lot of wars together and it made no sense, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now let me cruise down here to another part of the, the article. So then would Russia be willing to escalate the situation by sailing an attack sub into the Gulf of Mexico? Oh, according to the Washington Free Bacon, love that, two U.S. officials <laughs> confirmed that the Akula's incursion took place at the same time that Russia once again trotted out its Tupolevs into re uh, restricted airspace in June and July. Uh, of course, the movement of submarine fleets, uh, particularly those carrying nuclear arsenals, is a restricted topic in the U.S. as well as Russia. Uh, yeah, so basically it's there, and this this guy's not saying anything of why is it there. He's just saying well, it, yeah. it's there, and here's this part of it. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty much, if you want to go look at that and read so the rest of it. they're admitting without actually giving you any information out. Surprise! Exactly, exactly. Um, same thing with Area 51. Yeah, no, the base doesn't exist. Then why did uh, Bill Clinton in 1995 put out uh, Memo 35-95? Yeah, it's there, but we are just not going to talk about it. <laughs> well, yeah, they moved it. Duh. Yeah, it's an How area. people catching on? It's in Area 52 now, you know. <laughs> Bill Burns found that out in UFO Hunters with his crew when they rode a bicycle next to the fence. They couldn't see anything. Oh, that was funny. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. I'm always amazed by people and sheeple. Yeah, people and sheeple. The sheeple, bah. Yeah, let's shave them. Um. <laughs> Love to, but, you know, that brings up bad connotations. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Hey, I got a picture on uh, uh, I got a picture on Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook of Monsanto. It's me. What? I said it's not me. It's not you. No, it's not you. 
Uh, it's a picture of Monsanto. No food shall be grown that we do not own. Boycott foods that use Monsanto <sighs> products. There's a huge list. All the stuff I like. <laughs> Isn't that so, disgusting? Doesn't make you want to vomit knowing that you you yeah. are you you have been helping this jackass? Yeah, it's Aunt Jemima, Quaker Betty Crocker, General Mills, on and on. Campbell's, <laughs> Ms. Ms. Every Butterworth. major food that you buy, yeah. brand Procter and Gamble, Coca Cola, Best Foods, Lean Cuisine. Of all don't buy things, it. don't buy it. Uh, no, I have no Nabisco, Kool Aid, Ocean Spray, V8. Kool Aid, hell. Oh so, no. Oh yeah, it's all there. There's a picture right there in Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook. Check that out. <laughs> also, <laughs> who? Uh, yeah, just so much on there. Um, there's. This is I why I go to farmers markets and cook on my own sweet cheeks. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, you got to grow it. Oh, wait, you can't grow it because, uh, yeah, that's against the law now. Yeah, you, you, I told you about that. I, 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 about S510 being gone through the Senate and the Senate's going, yeah, we'll pass it. And the House went, no. Pot, dude. Yeah. It's easier to go pot. Dude, it's easier to go pot than vegetables. It's like, it's like they put this thing through, through this bill through the Senate and the House goes, no, we're not going to pass it. But then they put it in a rider on another agriculture oh, bill yeah. and now it's passed and now you can't grow food in your front yard. Okay, <laughs> you I don't to grow food in my backyard. front yard. I was never stealing it, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I got a picture. Uh, I, got more, I got more pictures up on Liberty and Freedom Network. One that says "Welcome to Freedom" and it's a bunch of cameras. <clears throat> so there you go. I see them. Thank you, Facebook. And another picture. Genius female champion uh, chimpanzee found to be smarter than U.S. high school students. Huh? Maybe it's something in the water. Yeah. No, Maybe. I talk to my son daily. They don't teach him anything. No. I'm constantly no. slapping my forehead because how stupid he is. And, and I can't say anything because, Mom, that's not what they taught us. And, you know, everybody's supposed to learn. And everybody's supposed to respect their teachers. So what am I supposed to say? Yeah, exactly. Teach exactly. an ass? Now, now I want to say this because you're mom. you the mom. I'm you the mom. you the mom. Mama, mama knows best. Not, not daddy. Not the father. No, no, no. Mama knows best. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cause I'll tell you what, cause mama can kick some major ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just the way it is. <laughs> I bet your mama was the same way. <laughs> My mama still is the same way. <laughs> it's like she's just tired now. <laughs> it's like you, you go out you, you go ask your dad and your dad's like, Go ask mom. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd rather ask mom because now dad is gonna tell me one of those droned out stories that is oh, like yeah. seriously. I remember when I was a kid, and you're thinking, oh my god, there goes three hours of my life. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, you walked up a hill both ways, barefoot, barefoot in snow, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my bicycle chain came off. Dad, you said you were walking. Oh, I was riding a bike. Okay, make up your mind. <laughs> you started riding a bike and now you're walking. What's up, dog? <laughs> now I just want to hand him the belt. I remember when I was a child and said, just, just beat me with this until yeah. you're done talking to yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Been there, done that. When you hear the air being cut with the belt, you're like, oh, my God, what did I do? <laughs> you know. Seriously. Wow. Ooh, when I hear when I heard my dad sliding that belt off his loops, I'm like, oh, yeah. oh shit. I know. You're like, I'm gonna, I can't hide. Oh, God. <laughs> you know? What did I do? What, did I, what tree can I climb? Uh, yeah, exactly. You gotta come down I sometime. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh -uh. Not until I passed out. <laughs> and good luck. You, go, you, you climb up an apple tree, that way you got food. <laughs> We had walnuts, and by then I was already sick of all. I cannot to this day stand walnuts. <sighs> yeah, I can't stand them either. That and cherries. Oh God. <laughs> well, in Clear Lake, and when we lived in Clear Lake, it was a black walnut orchard. Oh God. Talk about some really good weapons. Yeah, that's my phone ringing. So I don't know who it is, and. Ring. Yeah, if we don't know the number, we we we. You know, answer it and then hang up right away. We don't know. What I like those assholes that call me at 8:30 at night. By the way, it's a freaking recording. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's just. Tell you what, Jackass, if it's 8 30 at night, it better be good, and this ain't good. (laughs) It's either someone's in the hospital, or you better tell me I won the freaking lottery. (laughs) Okay. Oh, my. I better make it good too. Not this ten thousand dollars worth. Of it. You better make it a million fucking dollars, dude. Seriously, a couple million, because yeah, I'm gonna sue your ass. <laughs> oh, it's on. I had a marketing, and that's another thing. I got off. We got off on a tangent, but that's okay. It's okay. Marketing <clears throat> I had a marketing company call me. I had a marketing company call me the other day, and I was on the show. It was last week. You'll probably hear it if you listen to the archive uh, shows. <laughs> They called like five or six times during my show, like every like five minutes or something. So I went to break and I answered it and I said, if you don't stop calling me, and it's from Oregon, I said, if you don't stop calling me, I'm going to turn your number over to the uh, the Oregon State Attorney General's office. I hung up. They've never called back. <laughs> okay. Now my phone call is coming from Washington. Oh, yeah. The state. The state. Yeah. And I have friends up there, so I answer it. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Yeah. Do you know what time it is? By the way, you're not even calling for the right person. And then they still try to sell me shit. I'm like, you know what? If I wanted your product, there's a web. Okay, if you're not on the website, then you are retarded. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm. no. Hell no. Yeah. Mm-mm. Hey. Uh, taking, uh, a, taking a look here. I, um, doo-doo. I'll go to break in about 15 minutes. I was going to take the top of the hour break, but what the hell? I'm not beholden. Any, I'm not beholden to any network except my own. So I can take breaks whenever I feel like it. <laughs> Is it a potty break, dang it? Uh, not yet. <laughs> my, <laughs> my teeth aren't floating, so I'm okay. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that. My eyeballs go on the back of my head. I'm on a bus. I'm like, somebody's got to move now. <laughs> you're, okay. tra- you're traveling 300 miles. You're like halfway through. You're like, I got to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even traveling. I'm traveling to my home, okay, from across the city. <laughs> and I'm going, dude, y'all, A, are going to make me vomit. Okay, you stink. <laughs> B, <laughs> I guess nobody understands the, um, the light of deodorant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, when when I gotta go, I just look at the driver and go, "The next tree you see, you better stop." <laughs> you know, it's like, That's all there is to it, man. I, have, I don't have that, you know, eloquence allowed to me because I gotta drop trow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you know. Yeah, just, oh boy, here we go. Anyway, it's yeah. a joy. Being a woman is a joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. onward and upward before we get into the hole. <laughs> onward and upward. We can say that, but I'm dropping drow. <laughs> yeah, pull, pull him up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Why do we start this shit? I, swear I don't God. know, man. You called in. That was a problem. <laughs> yeah, but you, started, you know, you know, in the back of your brain, you're, you're sending me this this telepathic yeah. call in, call in, yeah. call in, and I'm going, bitch, if you don't <laughs> stop it, I'm going to call in. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's, <laughs> let's move on to something else. Okay. Uh, from the in, from, in the backyard isn't good, is that it? Okay. From the Intel Hub. Uh, dot com, the Intel Hub dot com. Oh no! <clears throat> Syrian group with close ties to the Free Syrian Army terrorists openly mm-hmm. arms rebels with the help of U.S. How do you? Okay, play? wait, wait, wait. Are we playing both sides now? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. We've been doing. Oh, surprise! That. We've been doing that since World War One. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're doing like surprise! And we spend all this money, and we're going to this deficit, and everybody owes us money, but we're gonna just gonna, you know, mm, stick it to exactly. them both ways. Yeah, baby. Exactly. What a... I mean, when, more... <laughs> when you look back in history, you look at the American Indian War, and you look at all these other little skirmishes that we had with the, uh, the with the American Don't Indians. Go there. 
I can tell you right now, there were gun runners for both sides. There were people selling guns to the military and then going, you know what? We got to sell them over to the Indians, too, man. We may need to it make some money. So, it was giving out information about our own troops. Please. Yeah. That didn't happen? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Come on. I mean, look at Sarah Winchester, the Winchester Mystery House. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes, you have to be all right. She better ro- worry about them ghosts. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. When it cold and everybody else isn't worried about their, their asses, but Winchester, oh, yeah. hmm. Yeah, this, go, this article is really, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to read it, it's over there at Liberty and Freedom Network. I'm only going to read a couple paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> the recently established Syrian support group and United States-based pro-Syrian army group housed just three blocks away from the white house is openly showing their support for the terrorist fsa like never before the ssg has just established this april as a non-profit and thanks to a special license from the treasury department they can now openly provide the syrian opposition with funding to purchase heavy weaponry which according to the new york times includes anti-aircraft and anti-tank missiles so they're killing all our boys that's awesome yep our money funds the destruction of our own government surprise yeah you say that with enthusiasm i'm not surprised by anything me neither me neither neither. i just i i don't i don't (laughs) I am not surprised by the infinite ignorance in Washington, D.C. Ignorance? No, this is downright treason. And oh, nobody yeah, is. is getting Nobody is getting repercussions. So no. what are we supposed to do? Um, have you heard the stories uh, where, uh, and I'm sure it's there in El Dorado County as well, uh, and Sacramento County, where the sheriffs in some parts of the United States, the sheriffs, the big head honchos in the county are telling the citizens, um, you better arm yourself because we, we don't have enough men to come and help you out. No, they keep all that shit under public. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not stupid. Please. No. Hey, you know what? Just because I don't think they're after me doesn't mean they are. Hey, you know, and and again, you can use, uh, you know, people can use that argument with, well, just because you say it is what's happening doesn't mean it's true. Well, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, You don't have the safe side. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You You just, just, just hear all the racket and all the yelling and all the gunfire outside and go ahead and close your curtains and you won't see it. So you won't know it's really going on. No, no, they're going to be left over for the zombies to eat. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I can just see you out on the roof of your house. <laughs> if the zombies come, you'll be going leftovers over there. <laughs> you'll be pointing. No, because they no. only pay attention to movement, so they're gonna go after me. I'm not yeah. gonna say anything. I'm just gonna have a lot of grenades and freaking <laughs> ammo. Hey, I just uh, <clears throat> yeah, I uh, I, I think if there's a lo- enough killed in front of my place. They'll go on to the next home. I'll, I'll, I'll just say Kind of like trick-or-treaters when you turn off the light, you know? I uh, <clears throat> recently uh, have become weaponized. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, we live in an open carry state, and I plan to, so, you know. And that's brilliant, because we don't. California has totally, essentially, California has banned... <laughs> I am so sick and tired of hearing all this little crap. Yeah. When liberals actually started, we were not these bleeding hearts, little freaks. No. We were anti-Republican and Democrat. We were for the people. Now we're for the minority people, and we're going to give them a voice, which is going to scream above the heavens, which is such a joyous thing. Yeah. Since the Constitution is getting trampled on. Oh, yeah. And you're going to give in California, thank you, Governor Moonbeam, uh, gonna give your illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, your criminals twenty five thousand dollars apiece. No, to go you don't even know how pissed off I'm about this. You know what? My my sweetheart just filled out paperwork that we read. Okay, the entire thing. We actually took the time to read the three page thing. <clears throat> it's all our rights. 
if you are an illegal alien, you don't even have to prove anything to get yeah. what we're fighting so hard to get for his father, oh, yeah. who is a fucking vet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The vets are being crapped on every day. Oh, no, this is Medicare. Oh, yeah. Medicare is just totally, it's getting, yeah, yeah. It's... <clears throat> this Medicare, these fuck be getting everything no matter what. They don't even have to, they don't have to do shit. Yeah. Yeah. They will have a translator provided that they don't have to pay for. Are you freaking high? We just if went I go to into a... any other country. If I go into any other country and cannot speak their language, I am fucked. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, that's true. I mean, what you, what you, what you read in those documents, we just went to China Mart over here, uh, Walmart, and uh, we went, there's, there's a McDonald's in the, in the Walmart there, and up on the wall, and I was just noticing this little thing up on the wall, and I'm like, well, that's, you know, I wonder what that says, you know, waiting for my food, and I'm reading it, and I'm going, sorry, boy. yeah, I get it. I went, what? And I looked at this, and I read it again, and I'm going, what? Number so one. So what did it say? I, I can't quote it verbatim. I should take a picture. Uh, I didn't. <clears throat> but it basically, the whole gist of it was, um, they do a, uh, uh, what's that, E4 or whatever it is. Oh, v ver e -ver e verify. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a joke. That's a complete joke because the sign right next to it says, yeah, you don't have to prove you're a citizen to work here. No, you don't. You don't have to even don't. prove who you are uh, and if you have the appropriate documents. What are the appropriate documents? The fake ones that the cartels give you in Mexico to get over here to get, yeah. you know, some, yeah. And it's like, wait sure. a minute, you don't have to prove you're a citizen or not. You just walk into McDonald's if you're an illegal alien and just get a job. Which is why I carry a driver's license and my birth certificate when they ask, and my social security card. Oh, but, yeah. you know, that's what matters if you weren't born here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm really sick and tired, by the way, of all you bleeding hearts of, oh, we were all immigrants. Guess what? My grandfathers, great grandfathers, and all that lovely shit, you were born here. Yes, we are native. Thank you. Yeah. Or we came through the proper channels. We went through Ellis Island. We were never here illegally. Thank you. Yeah. My... What we got here is a whole new story. But. <clears throat> We went to the proper fucking channels, people. Do you remember that? Do you yeah. know your grandfather's history? Do you know your grandmother's history? Do you know how you came over here? Do you know you're legal here? Yeah. My great-great-grandfather was a citizen of uh, Essex County in, I believe it was Quebec, Canada. He moved on yeah. down, or his family, part of his family, moved down to Michigan. That's where my grandfather grew up. Yeah. And I know my history. My grandmother, my dad's mom, her history goes back to 1144 in England. Mm -hmm. My aunt, Anne Trevet, married a knight. So, yeah, I know my history. So if you jackwads in Mexico want to uh, get away from your drug cartels, hey, come uh, you know, uh, talk to us because we know what's going on because Eric Holder sent all the drugs and guns to Mexico to allow you drug cartels to send it over here to the U.S. So, yeah, we know what's uh, going on. You know. My grandmother, my father's mother, he, he was first generation here. My grandmother came over on a freaking boat from Ireland. She was like seven when she came over. Oh, yeah. She went over legally. My grandfather was born here. His parents... Came over here on Ellis Island. They're from England. Yeah. So if you I know, know my history. It, <laughs> and a lot of famous people are first generation was or on, came here. Yeah. Yeah, my grandmother was on um, Spanky the Gang. Yeah. She was an actress. Yeah. A, a lot but of she famous came up people. A lot of celebs. Really, thank you. Yeah, a lot of celebs. Number one. I don't know. Or celebs, she was only on there, but you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of a lot of your famous wrestlers that are in WWE, they're from Canada uh, or Mexico or you know, England or something. They're all they're all citizens. You know. Yeah. And look at hey, you you want you want to talk about a f really big, huge, famous celebrity? 
Gene Simmons from Kiss, seven years old, came over here from Israel. Yeah. And <laughs> look how freaking rich he is. <laughs> yeah. But oh, yeah, seriously, yeah. you gotta do it the right way. I don't want to hear about this bleeding heart bullshit. No, Dude, no. My, my family, they busted their ass. Oh, yeah. My, uh, my, my mom's grandmother, my great grandmother, I think, came from the East Coast, came from uh, Midwest, actually. And mm -hmm. uh, her mother came, my great great grandmother came over this direction on a wagon. I mean, yeah, I know my history. <laughs> no, so, my grandparents came over during the Trail of Tears. I know my history. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a, I, I'm sure there's a lot of other people that, that hadn't, you know, <laughs> that really didn't want to be here but were forced at gunpoint yeah. to get on the boat and get well, over here. Is, ain't that pretty here, dude? Yeah. If you want to be here, way. if you want to be a United States citizen, go to the embassy, go to the every, go do it the right way and be a legal citizen. Okay. Uh, I'll shake your hand and we'll go to Disneyland and have fun. Okay. I mean, come on. Seriously. Shoot. Yeah. Although I don't want to get masters anymore knowing that guy was a uh, freaking dude. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know about Walt Disney, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Disneyland uh, yeah. is nothing but uh, a CIA behavioral science lab. Oh, it's not even that, dude. It's, it's fucking damn. Oh, yeah. yeah damn, yeah. I want to go to Disneyland. It was like, oh, let's go. No. I'd rather go to the Bay Area and go to, you know, Six Flags or something, you know. <laughs> oh, hell no. I just want to go to Santa Cruz. What's up, dog? Surfing. <laughs> yeah, bite me. <laughs> but, yeah. That's just a really good business and for some kind of amusement park that's going to amuse me. Yeah. Why? Yeah. No, it doesn't amuse me spending eight hours in a fucking line for a damn ride the last two seconds. I know Dude. exactly, exactly. What are the? We got a hundred people in a line, and the ride only lasts about a minute or so. And it's like, oh, you guys, oh, come on. Oh, you have no idea, Dude, We were stuck. First time I went to Disneyland, I was like two. I hear the story. Yeah. And now I understand why this song bothers me. I cannot stand a small world. I oh cannot yeah. Stand it. Me neither. Oh when god. I, yeah. That, that's worse. I was actually stuck. It broke down. Oh my god. Wow. The Small World song is just as bad as the freaking Barney song. Thank you very much. Oh, God. <laughs> Seriously, it's like torture for me now. Just even hearing, it's got to like spout off with it every now and again. I'm like, I will, I will stab you. I cannot be responsible for my shut up now. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I will turn into Lorena Bobbitt really quick. <laughs> no, I don't care about Lorena Bobbitt. I will stab you, and I know the areas. And, and yeah. it will hurt, and you will be a lot. Exactly. And if you continue, you will die. Uh, seriously, <laughs> oh my, you have no idea. The, 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 the power of, you know, repetition. Oh, yeah. Is scary. Scary ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Oh, because boy. it's a small world. Saying it gives me, my hair is sticking up on ends. Oh, yeah. It just, it's, uh, it's creepy. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> if you're stuck me a few hours and that's all you hear is a two-year-old child? Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's we're growing our brains. Oh, my God. Holy crap. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh, my God. We need to go back to Minnesota now. Kmart sucks. <laughs> no. Um, anyway, what? Game game sucks. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to get into the next article and then I it looked at, I looked at the time and went, holy moly, I got to take a break. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes, you're listening to the, you're listening to the views expressed right here in the Liberty and Freedom Network for the 31st of August, 2012 broadcasting live from the biggest little city in the world, Reno, Nevada. We shall be back after this. War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. That is from 1984 by George Orwell. Do you really want to know what's going on? Come listen to The Views Express, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, only on the Liberty and Freedom Network. Listen to Angel Clark Monday through Friday, 
5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Radio Freedom News Network. RadioFreedom.us Hey, BK, how's your show going to be any different on uh, KTRNRadio.com? Well, Jay, I want to make it more upbeat and more informative. Wow, that sounds good, BK. That BK show, now every morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Time on KTRNRadio.com. New time, new station, but the same, BK. 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Do you wear your sunglasses at night? Hmm, well, maybe you do some other crazy things, too. Why not add The Sandy Fox Show to your list? You can find me on Spreaker.com, IceCast.org, and TuneIn.com. Fox, out. Com. Yeah, we're, we're, back. we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Lovely day on this Friday. Gorgeous. Friday. Thank you. And I'm not going to play that Rebecca Black song Friday. That thing is the most annoying song in the whole freaking world. What song? Uh, Friday by Rebecca Black. I just know. I have uh, no idea. Thank God I have no idea, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you would, you, you, yeah. Yeah, you, you would hurt someone <laughs> with that. Excellent, because I've got the cats here. This could be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, before the break, I wanted to get into something, but uh, we had to go to break. So, I will get into it now. On Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook, there's this picture. And it's from the United Nations. And it says, and it says UN asks, you- how many people could live on planet Earth? The answer, 282 billion. Current population, 7 billion. Okay. Uh, And then it says, the United Nations has steadily spread, quote unquote, global warming and quote unquote, overpopulation myths to the politicians and the elite as the reason why depopulation is a necessary evil genocide. Geophysics at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research state that 282 billion people could be packed onto the planet with other land reserved for food cultivation. UN wants smaller populations, so they are easier to control, like Hitler, dream of building a master race. Uh, All I can say is convince the Catholics they don't have to breed anymore. Yeah. I I laugh because I I I grew I grew up in the Catholics. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> oh my God! You're like 
You don't have to have seven or eight kids, seriously. You know, before when I was younger, like into my teens or something, I, I went around and I saw some, you know, priests and stuff because and, my family and my grandmother and all that, we knew a lot of people in the Catholic uh, diocese there in Stockton. And, and, and nowadays I'm afraid to shake their hand because I don't know where their hand has been, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you well, know. Seriously, yeah. convince these people that you're not raising farms anymore, okay? I'm just like, I'm like, either you're former TSA or you've done something with that hand I don't want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I... uh, you have no idea, dude. Okay, you already know I'm a witch, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Throughout my entire life, I've never had a, you know, problem letting people know. Well, I, I knew this one priest, and he was pretty awesome. Funny enough, he walked into, I, I worked at a um, liquor warehouse store, you know, like Beverages Mar, or Liquor Barn, or whatever. <clears throat> I worked in one of those places, and he came in and gave me a huge hug. You couldn't hear a freaking pin drop. Oh, my God. I wore my pinnacle and everything, gave me a huge hug. Oh, how you doing? Can you help me? I didn't know you were here. Oh, sure, no problem. I'm helping them, and I'm talking about not burning up in flames. I think that's what really freaked them out, you know? <laughs> yeah. The power of Christ and, compels you. What? Seriously. And I've been given so much hell over being, you know, a witch. And we're talking, we're in 2000, okay? Thank you, people. Yeah. And I'm still getting hell over being a witch. And I have no problem. And, of course, this Catholic priest who knows me has no problem giving me a hug. Yeah, he gives me shit. But yeah. seriously, we're still, we're, we're just giving each other, we're like yeah. friends, giving each other crap, like you and me. And they're like freaking out when he left. They're like, oh my God, I didn't know. I'm like, yeah, I know a Catholic priest. He's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. Why are you all freaking out? <laughs> I know. When I was six, I need to go up in a pillar of wine. Yeah, when I used to uh, go to church in Stockton, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, charismatic, you know, Pentecostal churches and stuff like that, and the Baptist church. I told people what I do. I, I'm a psychic. I do readings. I do this. I do remote viewing. And and I have never seen uh, so many Pentecostals look at me with their eyes as big as silver dollars, and 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 they wanted to like lay hands on me and cast out demons. I'm like, Dude, oh, I love Pentecostals. Oh my God, they go into that weird jittery stage where they start oh, yeah. foaming at the mouth. Oh yeah, and, it's and just like I tell them. I'm I told him, I said, it's, it's, it's natural, man. This is what we're made of. We're spirit. This is what we do. And it, well, no, yeah, not me. Oh. There's devil shit, and, and I'm the one who's in hell? Yeah. It's like, hello. I mean, things, I, foaming and everything, and I'm like, wow. I you mean, guys are possessed. And I'm the evil one. Yeah, ah. and I know people at uh, Christian Life Center in Stockton, and, and they're just like, and I, my friend I, who I went to high school with works there, and, and he knows what I do, and he goes, yeah, just don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, yeah, you tell me what not to do, and I, that's the first thing I do. And what? I told people don't there. Don't tell anybody? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. I, oh, told people, I told people That's there. That's what I said, really, don't tell anybody? I tell everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Christian Life Center is very legalistic. They're the oneness crowd. And um, it's just, oh. and I love them. I love the people in Christian Life Center. They're really cool. But when I told them what I do, they're like looking at me like, uh, and they're backing up for about, you know, three or four feet. And I'm just like, yeah, because you're going to hell. I'm not going to do anything, folks. This is what I do. You know, I said, I'm, it's a natural thing. We just have to tap into it. And oh, well, that's well, evil. Was, and, blah, and I'm like, no, it's not. So my well, friends look really at awesome. me. Hmm? Yeah, my friends looking at me going, oh, I don't say nothing. Well, you know, you shouldn't have told me not to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Not even that, but seriously, people still look at me like I'm going to cast some kind of wicked oh, yeah. spell. And like, seriously, I don't fucking care about you. <laughs> I know. And as a psychic, I have people ask me, when am I going to die? I go, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, when you stop breathing. You only know the important shit. You don't know the devil daddle because nobody cares about that. Seriously. Yeah. The guys don't even care about that. Come on. Am I? Oh, I get women going. When am I gonna have a boyfriend? Uh, when you stop being a bitch. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, what I like is when you stop fucking the wrong guy. You know, I just I look at it, I I look at things at a very open-minded way, and and I'm very no holds barred. I'm just straightforward, shoot from the hip. I have become very like that, but 
But I don't keep my mouth shut because you know what? I am now living with a Gnostic who <laughs> likes to goad me. Oh my god. <laughs> and I uh, yeah, yeah, it is a very strange relationship. <laughs> I don't know how we do it or how we haven't killed each other. But, uh, <laughs> and he doesn't work in the same town you live in, so that's a good that's a good thing. <laughs> yes he does. Oh, he oh does? yes he does. Oh now he does. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh no, he 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 we always he's always worked in this well um since we moved to this place he worked in Citrus Heights. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Matter of fact, I was his employee <laughs> to begin with. Oh God. Yeah, I was his employee to begin with. And he knew everything before we even started dating. And he thought it was, you know, me. You know, I don't understand people. How they have to think they have to present themselves differently than what they are. Because I constantly tell him, you misrepresented yourself. I want my money back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pay me back for the dinner I bought. You know, yeah. I don't know. It's like, seriously, I want my money back and my life back and everything else. Because yeah. you, you, you are a lie. <laughs> you lied, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I get people telling me I'm an a-hole. I'm this. I'm that. I got an attitude problem. I got all I this. I got. I got I anger did. problem. I've had two stupid people. Thank you. I just, you know, I've had people look at me. at My ex-wife Leah has said, "You got an anger problem." I said, "No, I got a problem with people pissing me off." That's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Seriously, what are you gonna say? You know what? My my family. Oh, my family. Oh man. You know, I might be going to hell and by the way she's really an interesting uh norse goddess yeah but uh <laughs> Heck <it's laughs> Heck, uh, yeah. <sighs> do not tell me i'm going to hell the way you treat me seriously yeah. and all the shit and help i'm giving to you because i'm tired of getting stepped on yeah and i'm tired of keeping my mouth shut yeah. because in honor of since i'm at your home i'm supposed to be respectful right yeah no to my home. None of them. None of them. Because <laughs> they know. It's <laughs> fucking door. They say something to me. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Get the I, fuck out or I will the cops. Otherwise, I will grab something sharp off my wall and I will harm you. I have Get a out. solution. I have a solution. I, I don't have an anger problem. I don't have an attitude problem. Although all of us have that bit of anger in us. You know, because something goes wrong, we become enraged for some odd reason. I don't know why. We got to look at that. But what? I have a solution. Here, here's a one solution. Anybody can do whatever they want. It's up to them. But when somebody says, "Oh, well, you're this, you're that, you're this," you know what? I don't believe them. I never have, and I never will, because I know who I am. And if they, if somebody says, oh, you're this and you have that, and I, no, 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 I'm not. What you need to do is shut your big pie hole, sit down and discuss things with me and find out what I'm like. And then if you still think that, hey, okay, <laughs> you know. I don't know, a lot of this is for my family. And I'm like, dude, I grew up with you. By the way, <laughs> yeah. since you made peace with God, when are you going to make peace with me? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, God has forgiven me. Well, fuck God. Because God yeah. is not here at this second right now. Yeah. That the feel of flame show itself. Somebody said that to me. Somebody said, and and I make amends to people I've wronged, and it's okay because we go on and we laugh and we go out sure. to dinner. I mean that's kind of cool. But I always look at people and go, okay, you can you can forgive me. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. What about forgiving yourself? And they look at me going, what, I, 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 and it's like their head spins, you know, their brain, I can see the wheels in their head just like, you know. No, see, I'm doing screwed. the opposite thing. They're like, okay, because their God's okay with it. I guess they had a secret squirrel meeting yeah. um, somewhere <laughs> on the planet, and there was a pillar of flame somewhere, and it said, poof, you're <laughs> tall. They've got the decoder ring, I, I bet. <laughs> they do. They put the secret scroll all dialed in, and it's like, really? <laughs> yeah. Because that's awesome, because you did it against God, right? Yeah. Not me? Yeah. So, right, God forgives you. Go do spout your freaking language, yeah. and again, oh, I confronted this man. Because I found out through the grapevine that my family is, one of his first sermons, yes, this is a Baptist minister. Thank you very much. 
It was about witches. My name was in it. Oh. I confronted him. Whoever told you that is a fucking liar. I'm so sorry. These people that I talk to, whether we get along or not, is not a fucking liar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, they did some crappy things, some uncalled for things, but uh, they're not liars. Jeez. And uh, they like you better than like me, so why would they lie? Yeah. Yeah. But you have lots of reasons to lie. Yeah. Again, how much superior you are because you found God. Oh, yeah. yeah. I also found out for those churches out there, so those pastors out there, that when you sign uh -huh. that little document, the little 501c3 document that they, you know, for nonprofit, which shoves, you, in, sure. it shoves you into a totally different area of, of uh, you know, finance or Existence. whatever. Yeah, pretty much. The government can come along and tell you what to do. Sure they can. I'm yeah. sure the government isn't telling him to freaking lie that he said a sermon about me. Oh, yeah. It's like, here's what we need you to do. So it all goes back to that. But, yeah, I've had people literally. Oh, gee, I wonder. That, that goes back to the Church of England. Mm. Yeah. I've had people tell me, literally, when I stood in, in the foyer of Lakeview Assembly Church in Stockton, California, told me that I was a child of the devil if I continue to use uh, divinity or use my psychic powers for, for anything. And I'm like, what if I use them for good? It doesn't matter. So here's the argument that I gave them. So you're going to tell me that an evangelist or pastor can have a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, and, and I can do the same thing. Who's on the right side of God? And does it now you're going the to, same way? You're going to hell. Yeah. You're going to hell. It's all, you're not. it's all the same, no matter if it's an evangelist no, or pastor. They don't, they don't believe me. that way. No, they don't. They don't. I have learned this the hard freaking yeah. drinking way. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. No joke. I would rather drink them away than be the only one on my side fighting against, oh, oh you yeah. know, my family gatherings consist of like three people. Yeah. Minimum. In the next family reunion you go to, you should take about 10 or 15 witches there with you. <laughs> and yeah, go... actually, I wear all my regalia. <laughs> I know. I and just bring bring like five or six people and go out in their backyard and then do a <laughs> do a, 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 a ritual-like, you know, thing, you know, drawing down the moon or something. And... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and do, do it sky-clad. <laughs> Here's a real witch. It's okay. Yeah, do it. Oh, I got into the Wicked. Yeah. Turn into the Wicked. I'm gonna freak out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the most biased. By the way, I don't really care about what loving religious goddess they have. Yeah. They're the most biased fucktards. They, I'm, I, okay. well, you and I, you and I both had an experience with uh, a particular person who shall remain nameless here in Reno, Her Nevada. And uh, yeah. I, I have to say that, yes, you are right. Very biased, very one-sided, very, uh, I'm not going to say close-minded, but very having an attitude of, if it's not our way, it's no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know. It's like, you know, you call it a freak, right? Because he was a serious freak. <laughs> oh, God. I <clears throat> love the man, but, you know. <laughs> no, Joe, man. Whoa. That's wicked. If yeah. you follow Jared Gardner in all that path, yeah, you're wicked. Yeah, because they want a new religion based on old. I'm like, why don't you just cut out the middleman? Yeah, exactly. That's like saying, well, I want, uh, you know, and, and I know Satanists too, which is uh, an oxygen. Oh, I do. And they're actually nice people. <clears throat> a lot of them are nice people. Yeah, and they're great. But that's like saying we want, you know, to worship Satan without Aleister Crowley. Hello. <laughs> it's not gonna work, <laughs> you know. It's I I don't know. I've well, think about Lester did seriously. Yeah, he was an amazing guy. I uh, I I studied all of it from like way back, way. way oh, back. which in like seventies, eighties. It was well, like come on. <clears throat> but I went way back in history to like the Babylonians, the you know all ah. those folks, and and the Rosicrucians, and I mean you name it. I I studied it all, and I got to tell you, 
again, there's like like the Wiccans and some other people who are just they're just like, well, this is a lifestyle. It's not. A, yeah, get over yourself, okay? <laughs> it's you guys a are lifestyle breathing, sweetheart. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, lifestyle is waking up every day, going to work. You people just want to, you know, sit around and uh, well. <laughs> Some of them I know have the magic herb, if you know what I mean. And that's uh, all I ever do. Oh no, it's funny. It's funny, and I've been, I have been like ostracized here. Seriously. Oh yeah. Because I'm like, why is your way the highway? Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I didn't need you before. I certainly don't need you now. <laughs> I know. And when I, when I, now that I, I I'm for transparency purposes here i am pastor of uh, temple of universal spirit and literally uh -huh. that's what that is universal spirit it's all one and the same it does not matter what name you put on this energy that's out there that's life-giving it's all the freaking that's okay. same. I'm a pastor of Judaism, so there i mean yeah i mean it's all the same it's all the same energy but we all have different ways uh, to go about bringing about that energy into our lives and that's you fine need to look at this. You need to look into Dudism. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Ism. You know, you remember friggin' the dude from... Um, I want to say Big Lebowski. Yeah, there you go, my man. Yeah. They have a call. It's awesome. I'm a part of it. It's great. <laughs> Wonder why? They are awesome people. Oh, yeah. They don't even care. Oh, yeah. <laughs> way back. Which is the way we should be. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, when you look back, and and you look at like 16th century, 17th century, something like that, and you heard the word heathen, that word originally meant a person who lived on the outskirts or the heath of the town. That's that what was that the same pagan. Yeah. The word pagan was it was a serf. It was somebody who lived off the land. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then I explain these to people who say, oh, so I'm pagan, so I'm wicked. No, 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 no. Number one, you're not pagan. No, you're not. <laughs> no, two when you grow your own food. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's two different turtles, okay? You know what I'm saying? It's Seriously, just... and you're on your back, baby. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, no, no. But yeah, I'm I mean, like, pagan. I'm like, uh, when was the last time you yeah. gave your blood corn? Yeah. And and there's a lot, I, I, I gotta say, and, and, and there's a lot, and, and again, <laughs> there's a lot of good, <laughs> there's a lot of good Christians out there who aren't all caught up in the old, what I call, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the clergy drama that happens to be going uh, along, but, uh, the religious drama that happens in their parishes or in their congregations, but They're there's a lot people. of good, there's a lot of good people out there. But there are some yeah. Christians that are just, I'm telling you, you walk in with a witch uh, and you walk in with a, you know, you cannot sit in the same room with a Christian and a Wiccan and a Satanist all in the same room. Somebody's going to come out hurting, you know what I mean? And it's usually going to be, oh. the Christian's going to be yelling at the top of their lungs. You, you know what I'm saying? So, well, I've been there. <clears throat> yeah. I've been there. Literally, I, the only person who's able to help me defend myself was one person, and she was a Gnostic. Yeah. She 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 had a belief in something, but she couldn't call it God. She just said, I am what I am. And she was the only one willing to defend me. And yeah. I'm getting attacked by, like, 30 people. Yeah. Well, you baptized. That wasn't my choice. Well, you went yeah. through all these things. That wasn't my choice either. If I, I would have been, my parents would have kicked me out. They told me such. Yeah. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I and then, priest fucking convert me. I don't believe in I mean, uh, yeah, your, your, your parents, and I know some people as well in the Catholic Church, but if they are so hardcore uh, Christians as well in their stance on their religion, then why are there, and I know this, why are there Christian or Catholic paranormal investigators? I want to know that too. <laughs> you know? If they don't believe... Oh, they're that... not true Christians. That's what I get. They're oh, not yeah, true yeah, yeah, Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Is there a different level of Christianity? Is yes, because some are tempted by devil. Kind, and that kind of, is devil work. 
Kind of like the Mormon church. You have to be, you know, certain Oh, my God! Let's not go there. (laughs) Hey, let me get on to the last article here I wanted to read. We're talking about food earlier because I got a picture up there. Monsanto got all that stuff. Oh, Monsanto. (laughs) From Susan Pozell from OccupyCorporatism.com. High fructose corn syrup makes you stupid, says new study. Yeah, it does. Okay, you know what's funny? That that stupid commercial they had about high fructose corn syrup? Yeah. All they talked about was high fructose corn. When they got to the syrup part, it was ridiculous. Because once you go through that processing, that's where you get all the bad shit. Yeah, it's cooked. They don't understand that the corn is good. Yeah. Once you get to that syrup part, it's horrible for your body. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to have a chemical? Ingest that. Yeah. Seriously. This is a short article, so I'll breeze through this in no time at all. Uh, it says here, a study conducted by researchers at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. Thank you. Have discovered that high fructose corn syrup dramatically affects the brain's ability to cognitively function, i.e., it makes you stupid. Also, uh, I'm going to interject something here. It also uh, shows, uh, I think, a, a university back east has shown that when babies take high fructose corn syrup, in later life, their IQ drops dramatically. Um, oh, yeah. Continuing. And people want to talk about pot. Hmm. Yeah, continuing, UCLA uh, scientists study rats that were trained to run a specific maze. They were made to remember the course and were successfully at recalling how to enter and exit the maze without difficulty. The rats were separated into two groups, one being given water, which with high fructose corn added, corn syrup added, and the other given water of omega-3s added, which is a very good thing. The observational test lasted six weeks. Concluded, rats given omega-3s displayed improved cognitive abilities. Rats given high fructose corn syrup had extremely difficult, extreme difficulty navigating the maze. So they literally became retarded. <laughs> they became retarded. <laughs> so. I can say that because I deal with a person daily. Thank you. I know what retardation means. Yes, exactly. Uh, You're based, actually dumbing down yourself. Thank you. Yeah, based on further research into the brains of the rats tested, scientists found HFCS was actually blocking the rat's ability to regulate insulin, affecting how yes. their brain cells stored sugar for future use as energy stores. This problem was found within the brain's <laughs> area for processing thoughts. Uh, study researcher, surprise. surprise, yeah, I'm not surprised. By study researcher, Fernando Gomez Pania of, the, of UCLA, said the brain cells had trouble signaling each other, disrupting the rat's ability to think clearly and recall the route, the route, route, whatever, they'd learned Mm -hmm. six weeks earlier. We're concerned Mm -hmm. about high fructose corn syrup that is added to manufactured food products as a sweetener and preservative. We're not talking about naturally occurring fructose in fruits, which also contain important antioxidants. That's exactly. what Exactly. This is yeah. why people are now going to stevia instead of NutraSweet. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Eat more bananas. Trust me. <laughs> no, I can't. They, uh, they, mean, yeah. they make me they, vomit. Oh, so, God, but anyway. God. Yes. Going on. Good. Going on. The consumption of omega-3s aided in shielding the rat's brains from the effects of HS, <laughs> HFSCs. Eat more fish, people. Fish. Yes. Not the stuff. Oh, by the way, interjecting this. Uh, Walmart will not label the corn being GMO. Just letting you what? know. What? Yes. They refuse to label any food that is GMO. Well, they can't do that. Well, they're doing it. <laughs> so. Uh, French? Surprise! Yeah, there you go. Continuing. The, <laughs> and now it says... <laughs> The damage to our bodies from exposure to high fructose corn syrup has been reported on, on ever has reported. Let me see. It's it's affecting me now. The damage to our bodies from exposure to HFCS has been reported on ever since the product was introduced to the public. The importance of this study is how HFCS compares with omega-3. I don't think there's any comparison. So we're Um, lab rats. Yeah, this uh, scientist, Gomez Pania, said, 
Our findings illustrate that what you eat affects how you think. Duh. Eating a high Duh. fructose corn diet, uh, fr eating a high fructose diet over a long term alters your brain's ability to learn and remember information. But adding, they are children stupid <clears throat> again. But adding omega three fatty acids to your meals can help minimize the damage. Well, I'll just get the sugar out of there. Maybe that might help. Uh, Omega-3s assist in building memory. HFCS negatively affects the brain's ability to recall information. In similar study, <clears throat> oh, here's the one. In similar study conducted by Princeton University, rats were given HFCS displayed excessive weight gain even when their mm -hmm. caloric intake was not elevated. Simply consuming high fructose corn syrup caused the rats to become obese. The rats gained One, weight. Why are kids are fat? There you go. And the stupid video games. The rats gained That's weight it. around their abdomen, <laughs> which directly affected a rise in uh, circulating blood fats or the triglycerides. Professor of psychology. Yeah. Ooh. Professor of psychology, Bart Hovel, who specializes in neuroscience of appetite, said, quote, some people have claimed that high fructose corn syrup is no different than any other sweeteners when it comes to weight gain and obesity. But our results make it clear that this just isn't true, at least under the conditions of our tests. When rats are drinking high fructose corn syrup at levels well below those in soda pop, they're becoming obese every single one across the board even mm -hmm. when rats are fed high fat diets you don't see this they don't all gain extra weight he said now <clears throat> in closing while hfcs or high fructose corn syrup is in abundance because of its cost oh, yeah. of cost effective production the health risks are too great for this substance to be consumed on a regular basis hfcs can cause weight gain dental cavities increased triglycerides um, the american heart association recommended that on a daily basis women should consume no more than 100 calories from added sugar and men should consume no more than 150 calories from added sugar uh, regarding the findings of their study gomez Pinilla said quote it's like saving money in the bank you want to build a reserve for your brain to tap into uh, uh, to tap with uh, to tap when it requires extra fuel to fight off future diseases so basically get the damn high fructose corn syrup out of the products basically sweet cheeks just to make it easy for layman's terms yeah if your ancestors didn't eat the shit don't touch it <laughs> don't touch it yeah uh if it's a newfangled idea that wasn't come you know from oh we found this herb to be right which buy all the way yeah. Any herbologist worth their weight will duh, go, they go, will rise and duh. Yeah, yeah. You need fucking scientists to tell me that. Yeah. The, the American Indian smoked a peace pipe. What the hell do you think was in it? <laughs> you well, know? not even that. It's just like, seriously, people, if it yeah. didn't come out of the damn ground to begin with, what are you doing with it in your body? We your body is there as a natural, natural person, okay? Do not... Do not get the vaccines. Don't put poisons in your body with ah. drugs and all that. You know why? It, 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 it inhibits the body's natural regeneration processes. It can heal itself. Trust me. Oh, what if that disease comes back? It's all over here. What if it comes back? You know what? Your time to go is your time to go, sweet cheeks. Exactly. I tell people all the time. It's like when you're born, God gives you a number. And when that number is called, you're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Whether like, friends you over or you <laughs> eat some banquet thing, you're gonna yeah. be gone. <laughs> it's like there you go. You know, uh, I so have. Numbers, I've been. Yeah, I've, out. I've been to the other side. My heart decided, hey, I'm gonna take a nap for about ten seconds. And let me tell you, I wasn't scared. I was not afraid. <laughs> I was more concerned. My first thought in my brain when my heart stopped was, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> you know? That the was first the time first. I died, I, I actually just... died from croup. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like... That was the first time I died. The croup. I was in the 70s. The croup. Who the hell hears the croup anymore? Yeah, you don't. You know what it is? It's really horrible. I had it until I was 
probably 15. I still have bouts with it. Oh, yeah. Still. It's not really awesome, and I think it is a disease. Oh, yeah. But nobody can pinpoint it. No. So you live with it. Yeah, it's like the, I mean, it's like people that I know with asthma or minor cases of asthma. And when it kicks up, my God, they're, they're like, let me die. No, man. And you shoot with the inhaler and stuff and they're, and you get take them to the hospital and they get all that kind of crap. And about an hour later, well, a really couple did, hours later. You know, my parents fought so hard because we didn't go to the doctor. No. Shit. For the crap, come on. Oh, hell. Yeah, man. It's like if, if your well, ancestors... They killed themselves over, you know, getting me better from that bout. And then they feed me all this bullshit that I'm going, seriously? <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> your life isn't good. I know. My dad, we, we used to grow corn, like, you know, 10, 15 stalks of corn out in our backyard. My dad used to walk up and tear it open, snap it in half and eat it raw. And he goes, yeah, it's good. Let's take it. Let's make it. Let's harvest it. Okay. Yeah. And no, no, nothing, no preservatives, no nothing. Just, he'd go in, wash it off. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, the beans, the, the, the green beans and stuff we used to have and all that. Yeah. My grandmother used to come over. And just, uh, the reason I understand about cattle, okay, they're not pets, okay? No, no they're not. This is the quick lesson I got when I was about six. I had named a cow. Didn't understand. I had gone there all the time. It's a family farm. Came back. Betsy was missing. Where's Betsy? <laughs> we don't eat. Oh, crap. Awesome, you know, it's me. Yeah. Great. Well, I looked at my grandmother and I go, well, where, where's Betsy? She goes, Betsy. I'm like, oh, the cow that was always out there. And I described it and she goes, oh, guess what you're eating? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, damn, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Chickens are not pets. Thank you very much. No, no, no. I learned that when I was younger because my grandmother used to wring their necks. Oh, Old yeah. school stuff. <laughs> oh, run. They do run. They do run. Oh, yeah, they do. They do. I, my dad told me they do. <laughs> Missing heads. They run, and it's oh. funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, anyway. Guess where I got my sense of humor from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to lay hands on you and cast out demons. Excuse me? No. Hello. <laughs> I'm Get a the human chicken. Being. The chicken deserves it, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> You're sorry. I'm for planning a rebellion. Get them. <laughs> yeah. I can just see it now. The chicken's in the coop going, we're going to get them humans, aren't we? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, let's roll out. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> God. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad we can go anywhere on this show. It's so, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's so great. No, I was trying to teach my son because I was going to get rabbit. Okay, yeah. I was going to some rabbits like I've seen, you know, on the farms when I grew up. Trust me, there's nothing like picking up a rabbit tour going, what is this? And going, put oh, yeah. the dad, shit. What? Oh, yeah. From home. So, I was going to raise some rabbits when my son decided, no, that's Thumper. Oh, I'm going to have to squash this real quick. No, that's oh stew, God. dude. Yeah. That's stew. rabbit stew. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. The stew is freaking good. <laughs> oh, no! God. Hey, we're getting out of here, so I'm going to leave you with this. Um, You can find it on the Liberty and Freedom Network on Facebook. Uh, instead of worrying day and night about what the federal government is or is not going to do, instead of worrying about the fact that we apparently have no sweepingly effective leaders, and instead of worrying about what they did or didn't do, or what the Army says or didn't say, or what the Navy says about the Army and so forth, instead of worrying about this sort of thing, would it not be possible to just skip it? Now, yeah. <clears throat> that's a rather startling proposal, but... 
just skip it and be effective by making it possible for a country to exist sometime in the future instead of worrying about whether it exists now or whether it's functioning now let's just get down to the grassroots and begin to grow a country person by person guy by guy IQ by IQ and sooner or later these people will be smart enough to find some leaders and get a show on the road <clears throat> I agree with that, 100%. I will add one thing, uh, seriously. Instead of worrying daily about the news is going to bring you, yeah. pay attention. Exactly. Look outside. Go outside. Be with your yeah. family. Uh, freaking take care of yourself. Don't, don't do the new fad yeah. on the eating thing. Yeah. Take care of yourself. And if you're, if you're a woman that is so vain and wants to look like people like, oh, Kim Kardashian or something of that nature, if you're so into yourself and want to look so marvelous, yeah, move to L.A. with all the other phonies. I'll tell you what, do yourself a favor. If you're taking care of yourself and you truly are, you know, you exercise, just walking half an hour a day, if your body's the way it is, hell, bitch, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of beautiful, we got to get out of here. <laughs> it, it's like I used to say in California, dude, let's go to the Bay Area and just like surf, you know? Anyway. Oh, my God. No, chill. Oh my God. Uh, we got to see the sunset, you know? Anyway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's my homage to the California. Beautiful there. Dave's not here, man. <laughs> Dave's not here, dude. Uh, anyway, hey. all right, all right, Nicole, we're going to get out of here. We're going to take a run. Got a, another show to do here in a couple hours. So anyway, um, you guys have fun. enjoy yourself. Enjoy your weekend. And I shall talk to you later. Thank you for calling. Hey, love. We will, we will talk to you later and, uh, I'll let you go here and then I got to end the show. So. Anyway, and I gotta, uh, I gotta go eat dinner. Okay, I got that food thing. Get tea. I got that too. A minute. Get tea. <laughs> that too. All righty. I'll talk to you later, love. All right, babe. Have a great night. Bye. Uh, bye. You have been listening to The Views Express. That was Nicole from California, from El Dorado County. A very good friend of mine. I want to say one other thing before we leave here. I want you all to remember that you are responsible for yourself. Whatever you allow yourself to put up with is the amount of tyranny you're going to have. Okay? Just, I just wanted to put that out there. All right? Just wanted to put that out there. In the meantime, you can probably come catch us tonight, maybe, on the Diana and Wayne's Grab Bag Potpourri Talk Show, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. And you've been listening to The Views Express for the 31st of August, 2012. There's always something going on, always something changing every five minutes. So come check me out next Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Liberty and Freedom Network, broadcasting live on Spreaker.com. And remember this, we the people have the power, for we are America. America.